All right, so let's get started. So this is the DAT load board, and this is a board you're gonna to utilize to go ahead and find loads for your carriers. It's Trucker's Edge, and you're going to sign up. You can either sign up as a dispatch company or use one of your carriers um, if they're okay with that, and then you'll be able to search for loads um, using this system. Now, if you take a look right when you sign in initially, um, and they're having some troubles today, so there's normally a blog here that shows all the latest information about uh, loads and what's hot and what's trending, but they're having uh, technical difficulties today. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, show you guys this. And this is, uh... okay, cool. And this is um, the van count. So the in and out, that's how many trucks are going in, and this is how many loads are coming out. Um, so, this is like a general idea so you can figure out, hey, where's a good spot to send this person? So Arkansas is pretty good right now. There's 400 trucks going in, 600 coming out. California, 3,000 going in, 4,000 coming out. So you get an idea of which to look at and which to choose. Now, if you scroll down to a state, for example, like uh, Utah, only 400 people going in, 386 coming out. So obviously that's less than ideal, and that's definitely not somewhere you're going to be wanting to send somebody. Um, and also this isn't a hard fast rule either, but this just gives you like a general overview of to look at. And you can also select which type of load you want, depending on the type of equipment your carriers are utilizing, such as vans, flatbeds, reefers, containers, decks, step decks, dry bulks, hazardous materials, vans specialized, and just get a view like that. Now, after you're done with that, this is how you go search for a load. You jump on the screen here and it'll have, you could select recent searches, you could select favorite searches, um, and you can set a de destination. So let's just say we want to load out of Los Angeles, California today. We're going to go ahead and type Los Angeles. The deadhead, I always leave at 150 miles. That's a safe number usually for carriers um, and it should yield the most results. Now once you jump out the 200, 250, you're going to get even more results or you might possibly populate a field that there's not a lot of results, um, but that's a lot of deadhead, and it's definitely gonna hurt the driver's pocket. So you wanna try and make sure that they're gonna get compensated for doing an excessive amount of deadhead. Now here you're gonna select your destination. We're gonna leave it as anywheres, right? So normally you just leave it blank, and then the deadhead doesn't matter, and then we're doing, uh, we're, we, I always do specific searches, but you can do general. So for, for purposes of demonstration, I'm just gonna show you general. We're going to do reefer loads. Here you can select them all. Now if you want to do specific, you can select specifics. And it goes on for days depending on the type of equipment you're using. So we're just going to select general and then it's going to move back to reefer. Our length, I never put this because I'm loading 53 foot reefers. I've never loaded a small box truck reefer, but if it was, I would put 26 feet there. Um, I'm going to put 53 foot here just to help it out. Uh, I don't put weight because weight's never a concern on a, on a reefer trailer. Everybody's able to load around that 43 average mark, 43,000 pounds. And then I'm always looking at full loads. I don't personally put together partial loads of um, products that are refrigerated because you don't know if the temperature is going to be the same and you don't want somebody's product tainting someone else's product. So when I do it, I don't do that. Now I go ahead and I select a date. So the dates for today, it's already set up. I don't have to change anything there. But if I want to look for the future, say for example tomorrow, which is 9-3, I would then just go ahead and, and change this to the third. And uh, I would and I would change this to the third. Now let's just say the guy's like, ah, oh, we can load here tomorrow. Let's just see what's out there. We can put the second here and the third there, and that's going to show us all the loads for today. And then again, all the loads for tomorrow. Now let's click that search button and see what populates. Beautiful. So initially when you click the search button, the way it's going to display information is simple. From top to bottom, from the most current posting down. So if you look here, zero minutes, scroll all the way down here. I don't know, it's going to catch up here in a second, guys. This is 11 minutes ago. And then down here is 21 minutes ago, right? So I personally don't necessarily care about what was just posted. I want to know what's making me the most money and also what's going to make my carriers the most money. So I'll go ahead and select offer. Now I will sort the results based on the highest offer up front. So here we go. Rocky uh, City of Industry, California to Rocky Hill, Connecticut 
2,800 miles, paying $11,800. This is why you do it this way. You, you want to go ahead and you want to utilize the system to better direct you and where to go. So if you guys don't have a problem with going to Connecticut, which they shouldn't because it's right outside New Jersey, and New Jersey is a great area, you send them up to Connecticut. Then let them deadhead the 100 miles to New Jersey and do a pickup after delivery. And then you can run them back over to possibly Illinois or Ohio or um, Texas. It just depends on what route you like to run, even Colorado. It's just all based upon your own personal preference. So now let's just say I'm looking at these loads and I'm like, hey, um, you know, I'm not really sure how it looks in Connecticut for loads right now. I'll just go ahead and do this, hit a new search, and then I'll do um, Connecticut as a state, CT. And then I won't do a destination because it's irrelevant to me. And I'll look for today. I'll look at today because today is going to kind of paint a picture of what it looks like there. So I know if he goes there, it's going to be okay, right? It's not going to be great. It's not going to be amazing. But there's work there to get him out of there. So even for this, look at running back to Cali, 3,000 miles, a little less than that. But let's just include a little bit of deadhead, which is going to be about, I think, 30 miles roughly from Hartford uh, from the previous location. And they're paying $6,200. So that's over $2 a mile. That's a great load to run you back to Cali. You can run that straight shot. And, and you end up doing, in about a week's worth of time, you would have done about seven. Uh, what is it? 11,000 and then uh, 6,000. So what is that? Uh, 17,000 and some change, which is going to be great money. And your people are going to be very happy. Uh, and, and to me, that's the most important part. Now, obviously, you're going to have to call. You're going to have to read. This is, for example, a reefer with team. That's why they're paying so much. This product needs to get their ASAP. And that's why they're doing it this way. You could see all the notes over here on the right hand side. So it tells you everything about the loads. Uh, this guy's Lancer Transportation Logistics. It tells you his offer, what the average has been, how many miles. Also, they can factor with them. So that means they probably have a decent credit rating, which they do. It's right there. It's 97. It gives you the contact number. It gives you a lot about the load, the pickup date, the pickup hours, dock hours. Um, if it's a full load, reefer, 53 foot, how much, what's the expected weight? It's going to be 40,000 pounds. And then it's going to show you, hey, this load needs to kept between 40 and 60 degrees. So you know that, listen, with your average reefer, you can run this load. Now, if it's a, a frozen load, you would expect to get paid even more. And not everybody can run frozen loads. Some people might have older equipment. Some people might not have equipment that can maintain the level of coldness. Also, you gotta factor in the outside temperature. If you're running through the desert and it's 125 degrees, it's gonna make a big difference on the reefer. And the newer the reefer, the better it's gonna perform, the thicker the walls will be, and the better the insulation will still be within those walls. Unless, of course, you've hit, you know, the carrier has hit things with the trailer and caused damage. That caused an air leak. But hopefully they don't do that, and that's, uh, that's on that note. Now, I would just simply look at this, and I would say, hey, this is great right here. This is the one for me. I got a team in my truck. Now, you could fire them off an email direct, and I normally don't do that unless it's an email-only situation, uh, which it looks like these people are. So you'd have to shoot them an email and say, hey, I'm interested in this load. Can you go ahead and uh, get that over to me? And then if you do that, you're able to um, you're able to really just communicate with them through email. Um, and it kind of goes efficient. I would just shoot out an email, and in the email I would say, hey, I'm looking to book Hartford to Mayor Loma. And then in the message I would say, good afternoon. I am looking to book this load for today. My truck, my truck is empty, and my clock is and the my truck is empty and the clock is fresh. My MC number is. I would then go ahead and put the MC number in there, and then I would say, please send me all the load information such as um, date and times for pick and drop. And then I would, boom, send it out. And, and that's honestly the easiest way. Um, so 
you know, I, I do it just like that. It seems to work just fine for me. Um, and everything is good with that. So it's not a big deal. Um, let's see here. How do we get rid of this? Uh, sorry, guys. Hang on one moment. Uh, we don't want to do this. Um, oh, this looks crazy now. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can stop it. All right. I don't know. I'm not really sure how to close that out. So unfortunately, it's going to stay for now. Uh, let's see. Does this do it? Nope. I don't know. file and then let's close don't save all right perfect so now we're back up to the dap board and honestly to me this looks kind of simple um it's not super overwhelming uh when you call a broker for example these folks here uh humphreys now i just selected their thing by accident but if you would wanted to call humphreys you click the box there's the number the gentleman that you need to speak with or the woman is at extension 212 you're going to go ahead and call that number, dial, and then when it's asked for the extension, dial 212. And then um, you're going to call and ask about this load. You're going to say, hey, my name's whatever your name is. I'm calling about the load from Ellington, Connecticut, the Jessup, Maryland. And they'll say, okay, great. Here's the information. What's your MC number? So make sure you have your carrier's MC number ready. Um, also, your driver's contact information, because usually they're going to ask that over the phone as well. Um, if you have not done a carrier packet with this carrier make sure you tell them hey listen I'll, I'll do a carrier packet right now just shoot it over to me and i'll start working on it while we're on the phone that way you get set up and even if you don't take the load with these people at least you're getting them set up so in the future when a load is available you don't have to go through the whole setup process at that time there's no problem with filling out the carrier packet even if you don't take the load now you might not want to fill it out at that moment and you don't have to but after you get done booking the load up from somebody else, a different broker, you jump on there and then you knock out that carrier packet so it's done and it's wrapped up. Honestly, that's the most simplest thing and uh, explanation I can give. Um, you definitely want to stay away from people who aren't approved to factor. Um, let's see if this even shows anybody. So these people here, First and Freight, Ascent Global, uh, they don't have any credit it looks like. So you're going to have to definitely verify these people with your carrier's factoring company to make sure that they can factor the load with them. Because if they don't, you may not want to book the load or you might want to talk to these people, uh, for example, Sent Global or First and Freight, and ask them, hey, what are your quick pay options? And if they're willing to do quick pay in 24 hours or 72 hours, call your carrier, say, hey, listen, they're not set up, you can't factor them, but they can quick pay you in as little as 24 hours, do you want to take it? And then leave that up to the carrier's discretion. But that's definitely something to consider. Another option here is to post trucks. Now, unless you have um, a dispatch setup and you're not using the carriers, I don't recommend posting trucks. I don't do it myself. I don't need to do it. I've been doing this a long time. I mainly try to work off my email connections and the brokers I've dealt with now for a period of time. Um, but you can go ahead and post a truck if you are logged in as the carrier that you want to post the truck for. And that'll have people calling you saying, hey, we have these loads. Can you take it from us? Blah, blah, blah. And then you can go ahead and deal with them that way. Another thing that they have here is alarms. So you could set an alarm to where when a new load pops up, it will now alert you. And it'll ding. And it'll say, bing, a new load popped up. Bing, a new load popped up. Now, depending on the level of the DAP board you have, it'll automatically refresh. Or it may not automatically refresh, and you will have to keep clicking the refresh button. So that's definitely different based upon everybody's settings. Um, another thing that I can use here that I often don't use is search trucks, because I have no reason to find trucks. Um, but if you are trying to find trucks, you can certainly find them here. This is private loads. This is a new program. I don't know anything about this particular program. Uh, this looks to be brand new. Uh, let's see here. Private networks will streamline the way carriers and brokers schedule shipments with more time-saving options for tendering freight. Watch this space for new developments as we create personalized search results that connect the right truck with the right load at the right price. Well, I'm not going to be rude, but I'm pretty hesitant on this. Um, I've seen larger companies um, that are carriers that have thousands of trucks try to implement a program like that, and it didn't work out well. It's going to take a lot of information to make that successful. 
and it's going to take everybody being on board from the carriers to the brokers and then in some instances the shippers. So I just don't see that materializing as well. Um, you can send back feedback if you have need some uh, to send them some information or, or problems you might be having, and then you can always talk with someone live support um, and get some help. Uh, let's see here. You got the DAT directory. That will be a way to, for you to look up brokers or any information you may need. Um, sometimes a number posted is invalid, so you would go ahead and uh, I'll just show you guys right here right now. Uh, let's just run the search again. And uh, you would click this and you'd say, oh, man, you know, this gentleman here, uh, he didn't do it, but let's see if we can find someone that did it real fast. Okay, well, this person here, they only let me email them. Well, and let's just say the number here doesn't work. You can click this. And then it's going to take you into all the information for this person. It's going to usually take you back into the corporate phone number, which may be different than the number posted. You're also able to go ahead and check out their information, see when they started their business, making sure they're bonded, have everything on file. Now, you don't need to do this every time, right? If, if, po if folks are able to post on that, they're bonded. But you may want to check the credit score. You might want to see how long it takes to get paid by these people. What's the average? Um, also right here we'll have some contact info about them and also their website, how many folks work with them, and uh, who the owner is. And this guy built this company back in 2014. So it's, it's really nice. Uh, we can look at their credit profile as well. You can see that they have a history of paying. Uh, these folks when they first started out, it took a little longer to get established. Uh, know, let's call it what's, uh, like a month maybe. And then they were, boom, they've been on point. And now coming into July, it looks like, you know, they're in the 90s. So they're still good to deal with. I mean, everybody's going to have a problem sooner or later. Nothing goes perfect, um, whether you're on the broker side or you're a carrier or you're a dispatcher. So you, you want to go ahead and try to, you know, give people leeway and take everybody uh, at face value. Now, another thing that I didn't talk about yet is they do have different types of things in here. Um, and depending on the level of product you have, you can do that. You can report bad behavior, you can do fuel optimization, fuel tax, and this will help you figure out what's the explanation, what, like, what's, what's the fuel cost going to be? You know what I mean? So I could put in the origin, let's just put in Los Angeles, California, then let's just put in stop one, which was, I think it was Southington, Connecticut, right? We'll just do this for Pete's sake to give an example. Okay, and then that's it. And then the route method is going to be practical. And my trucks as a whole, the fleet gets seven miles per hour. And then we're going to run the trip. Now it's going to be roughly 2,879 miles. On average, the fuel cost is $3.52. They're estimating it's going to cost $1,400 to run this trip. Now. I don't necessarily agree with this because they're going to have you take toll routes in Ohio that are going to cost you $219 in expenses. Um, you know, we're going to avoid that. So when my guys are doing their route planning, I'm hoping that they're avoiding their tolls. So that's automatically going to reduce the fuel price down to $1,200 um, and some odd dollars. So even further from this, it doesn't take into account if you get a fuel discount. So you got to also think that that's going to come into play. So if I was to throw an estimate out here, I'm going to think that this trip's going to cost around $950 in fuel. Um, this is a great tool, but it's not something that's exactly dead on. So you have to just use it as a lightly as a tool just to figure out a rough idea on what things are going to be. It's, it's not steadfast. Um, let's see what else we got here. A quick rate lookup. We can go ahead and do the same thing here. We jump on reefer. We're going to do Los Angeles. And then the destination, we're going to do Southington. And this is going to tell us. So this is the broker to carrier spot rate. Okay. This is telling you what the average is for 15 days. It's right around 9,500. Um, right now it's actually larger than that. They're paying about 11.5 I saw, right? Or, or 11 plus, 11.2. Um, and that's, that's okay. So that means you're making above average money. Now you can also do a tri-haul. And what that means is these are pre-calculated areas to stop off. 
um, where the DAT load board is seeing high volumes and says, hey, if you if you run a load from um, here to here, you're actually going to do more money in revenue. So when I leave LA, I don't do this, but maybe when I'm going back towards California, I'm going to do this or I'm going to look at this. And then this kind of tells you, oh, well, see, we don't have this with our subscription. So you can pay extra and see what the shipper is, is estimated to be giving it um, to you for if you were to have a contract with them. But you don't really know. It's, it's hit or miss. I mean, they try to use as much information as possible, but um, it's definitely not guaranteed either. That is pretty much the general overview of how to use a load board. Um, you know, it has basic information, pick up, drop off. Uh, how many miles it's going to be, what's the estimated deadhead, and in, in order to get these to populate, you'd have to put the actual cities in, um, and then it will tell you, hey, it's 50 miles deadhead, and they're like, okay, cool, I know it's going to be a total of 188 miles with the deadhead, so now when you're billing or when you're quoting it, you want to try and get paid extra for the deadhead as well. Um, you know, it's going to be 49,000 pounds, this bad boy's heavy, uh, 53 foot, they pay, and uh, here's the rate. Um, this book now option I don't even see really that much. It's only for a couple of uh, brokers. Like for example, here's one or two. Uh, Coyote's one of the folks that do it, and it looks like they're the only folks doing it at the moment. So 